Welcome back guys and girls, my name is Coxie and this is part 13 of our first person shooter tutorial series in Unity and today we are going to be making a simple spawning system for our enemy it's going to start off very basic and then we are going to add to it later on and make it a lot more customizable for your guys game so that you can tune it to however you want but as always in this we start off with mostly the basics and we'll take it from there so what we need to do firstly is we just want to set up a system where this guy will spawn into our game he's not just standing there when we start the game so there's lots of ways we can do this we could make a game manager and we could make some spawn points and then we could tag the spawn points and maybe find all the spawn points when the game starts and then you know spawn enemies at them points over a certain period of time um, with randomization and randomize the spawn points and all kinds of stuff like that which we can do that if you guys want but to start off with I'm going to do it very basically we're going to make a trigger on this doorway the player will walk through this doorway and then we'll probably have a few spawn points in here where the zombies will spawn and that will be a good base for this system so what we need to do first is we'll make a trigger so in your hierarchy make sure you're not clicked on anything and just go right click 3D object go cube uh, I'm on resize if you press W it'll put it back to the move tool for some reason it's way over there okay okay I don't know where the hell that's gone so I'm just going to look here and I'm going to click on the cube and I'm going to go control alt F and then it should bring it to my view which is here so that was control alt and F and you have to make sure you clicked on the object and it's blue or you could go to game object and move to view as you see control alt F is the shortcut so I'll click on this cube and I'll just bring it up it's still nowhere near where I wanted it so the better way to do that sorry I'm getting off track but this is actually really handy stuff to know when you when you're building levels and things like that because otherwise you'll spend your time trying to move objects around in 3D space and um, yeah it can be a real pain in the ass sometimes so we have a zombie here which is close to where we want to put the cube so if I double click on the zombie like that and then click on the cube and then control alt F it'll put the cube where the zombie is okay so that's gonna make our life a lot easier put that cube in the doorway and get it roughly in the middle which should be about there a bit more over so now what we can do on our cube is rename it to spawn trigger we'll call it spawn trigger 01 and then we can just go up here like make sure you're clicked on the spawn trigger and there's a mesh renderer here which is the actual cube itself we can take that off and then we're just left with the cube box collider which is all we want and then you can press R and it will bring up the resizing tool so we can resize it I'll just actually press W and move this into the middle of the doorway approximately and then R again and then we can resize it up that way so there's no way the player can walk through this door without setting off the trigger and then of course we need to make sure that the box collider actually is a trigger okay so we've got that now we need some spawn points so probably have one just here will be okay click off that and just go you could do a cube again you could do an empty game object if you wanted to it doesn't really matter it, it's the same thing when you turn off the mesh renderer so uh, I'll just do another cube here hopefully this one's a bit easier to find okay there it is excellent it's kinda handy doing it with a cube so you can see exactly where the 
things going to spawn like that. And of course, we can turn off the mesh renderer. And all we actually need on this cube is the uh, transform. So you could actually just completely remove that. You don't want the collider either, you can remove that. You don't even have to have that. Just have the transform and we're good. So that's why you could just make an empty game object if you wanted as well, and then it's gonna just be like that already. So we've got one and we can just call this spawn point zero one. And then control D, this one over there, this one is number two, okay, let's move that back a bit there, and then control D. Spawn point number three. I think we'll put this one at the actual doorway over here. Just like that. And I might just rotate that so it's facing the other way. So 180, so the Z axis is the forward axis, so if we're going to spawn the enemy using the, the rotational transform of this spawn point, then we'll want this facing that way so the enemy spawns facing out. Not that it matters, because you won't see it. The enemy will probably spawn, would have spawned facing this door, but then he would have just turned around and started chasing the player anyway, so that's no big deal. No big deal. Alright, so we've got some spawn points, so make sure you're not clicked on anything in your hierarchy, and right click, create empty, F2, and we can just call this spawn points. Make sure with this one, because this is going to be a f uh, empty storage folder basically, just to store our spawn points. So click on your spawn points, and then come up to the little cog and reset the transform, so that it's all zeroed out, and then we can just select all three spawn points and drag them so that they are children of the spawn points, okay? Just like that. So, we have our spawn points, we have our trigger, and now we just need to write a little bit of simple code. Scripts, enemy scripts, well, this doesn't have to be an enemy script because it could be just an object spawner. You could spawn anything. You don't have to spawn enemies, but for this one, I suppose, we'll do an enemy spawner. So, open that up in Visual. Oops. Delete that. Okay. So now what we're going to need is we're going to need a game object to actually store what we want to spawn, which is our enemy. So we could, for now, just do a public game object enemy to spawn. And we're also going to need, we could either have another game object or another game object array or a transform array to store our spawn points. I'll do a transform, transform array and that will be spawn points and also actually no that'll do for now so I'll just, we'll just see how this goes first and now what we want to do, because we're using a trigger, is do a void Okay, a lot of stuff came up then A void on trigger enter and Collider, which is other So the other collider that we're going to be looking for is 
the player. So we'll say if other dot tag is equal to player, then we want to do something. So what we want to do is we want to spawn our enemy. So we'll just make another function here, void spawn enemies. And there's so many ways we can do this, but I think for now, the simplest way to do this will just be to do a for each statement. Um, so easiest way to do a for each is just to go for E, and then it comes up and then just press tab twice and it automatically fills it out for us, okay? So now we need to change these. So we've got for each, it's just got var item and then in collection. So this will actually be a transform because what we want to do is get every spawn point in this spawn point array. So it would be var and then we just make up our own name for this item so we'll say SP for spawn point. We could actually change this var to transform, it doesn't matter, but we can just leave it as that. In spawn points. So for every spawn point in this spawn points array, we want to do this. So what we want to do is instantiate an enemy in each one. So instantiate enemy to spawn and then the position and rotation we want to instantiate it at is transform no it'll be spawn point dot position and spawn point dot Rotations. This is what I was talking about when I turned that spawn point around because we're going to use the um, the spawn point actual rotation. So this one here, the enemy will spawn, well should spawn in this rotation. It should face forward. So we'll just use that. You could also do quaternion dot identity, and then it will just spawn the object that it's rotation that it's already in. It'll just have zero rotation and Let's make sure I said that right. Let's just have a look. Let's see what it says about quaternion dot identity. This is one of the easiest ways to learn because if I just go on this, it'll um, Visual Studio will always let you know what what things are. So this is the identity rotation. So the identity is the object that we're spawning. So it's going to spawn it on the rotation that the object's already in. If we do it that way, or we can go back and use the spawn point dot rotation which might be handy if we want to um, have things spawning in different rotations for some reason I don't know you might want to do that so we'll do that control s to save and then of course we want to call spawn enemies in here okay so this is obviously oops what have I done gotta spell it right save it again yeah, so this is obviously a very basic way, but as I said, we can add a lot to this and change it a lot to make it pretty cool and customizable. So for now, let's just see if it works. It's always a good start. Don't get carried away when you're first starting to write the base of the script. So if we go into the game, I've still got that blood glitch even though I've just upgraded to 2018 but I cannot seem to get rid of that blood glitch anyway here's our door if we walk through nothing's gonna happen because we didn't actually fill out any of the script so go to your spawn trigger of course and we actually want to put the script on here for a start and then we want to press this lock up here so we lock the inspector and then go to prefabs we want our enemy as the object to spawn 
And the easy way to fill out an array, I see a lot of people dicking around with this and it drives me crazy. If you just lock it like that, you don't have to worry about writing the size and then individually dragging each single one in there. That's just crazy. You just lock the inspector, don't touch that, just go to your spawn points. You could have 50 spawn points here. Make sure they're all selected like that and then just drag it on top of spawn points here to see that plus sign and let go and it puts them all in order that you selected them in done okay now play and we walk through this door and things should happen there we go we got zombies the only problem is now if the trigger's still there so if I walk back through this door we're gonna spawn more enemies and more enemies every time I walk through it okay you might want that I don't know but that's gonna make things a bit difficult so easy way to fix that just go back into your script and you could just write collider here you could write whatever you want you can make it a public collider and drag the trigger collider into it if you wanted to but I'm just gonna write what it actually is which is a box collider and I'm gonna call it trigger because that's how I do it in all my games and I know what it is so we need to avoid start if you're going to make it a private one because we need to actually find it and easy easy to find it just trigger dot get component box collider so we're actually because the script is on the spawn trigger and we've only got one box collider on here when the game starts we're automatically going to grab this box collider which is called trigger and then when we walk through the trigger we can just say trigger dot enabled equals false save it and that should be no problem just wait for it to load so now if we walk through here We've got our enemies spawned, and if I just pause the game for a second, and you'll see here, what have I done? Trigger dot get component. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's obviously not right. Why didn't you guys tell me that I just totally screwed that up? Go back into your script equals okay trigger equals get component box collider I couldn't find our collider obviously and it's it's even told us here so you know it would have just taken us straight to that line if we clicked on it easy peasy okay so now it should work go through that and then if we go and pause the game for a second you'll see we've walked through the trigger and the box glider has disabled itself so now we can just walk through it and it won't keep spawning walk through it walk through it we've still got three enemies yeah Okay, that's enough of that. Alright guys, so that was the tutorial for today and we can now spawn enemies into our game and as I said we can customise this script a lot to work for many different situations. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I appreciate you guys watching and the ones that have been supporting my channel even when I'm not releasing many videos. I still hear from you guys and it's it's really awesome it, it makes me want to make more content and i do appreciate you guys watching so i will see you soon and thanks for watching cheers